Good Thursday morning, May 29th. It is a little after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Michael Clark with BAM Weather. Got an update for you today on updated summer forecast thoughts. What is it looking like? What are the risks? What are we battling? We're going to talk about that, including perhaps one of the most active June severe weather uh, episodes we've seen in, in, in possibly decades. So June could be very active. Uh, with severe weather chances. We're going to get into it. we got a lot to discuss today. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share it with a friend, all right, and let folks know you're watching here this morning. This is a look at the updated drought monitor, okay, just in here today. Um, and again, you know, the big focus I want to talk about here, because I know a lot of folks are focused on it. It's been raining. It's been wet. No disagreement in spots, all right? But in the last four weeks, um, we have seen you know, class changes. We've seen drier uh, trends, especially, you know, I've harped on this area for several weeks. I know it got rain yesterday, I understand. Um, but nonetheless, it's still um, something that has my attention. Even, even central Michigan up here, it's, it's dry up there. Uh, now, there's been improvements. We need a lot of rain in Nebraska, for sure. Um, but I want to talk about kind of some perspective here. This is the 14-day percent of normal rainfall. It's ending yesterday, okay? So it's the 15th through the 28th of May. You can see that western Nebraska, northern Dakotas have had good rain. In fact, 14-day percent of normal exceeding 200%, all right? Even in the last 14 days where it has rained in spots, we continue to see an area surface here. We continue to see a problem spot in the 14-day departures. We go to the 30-day departures, all right, and we continue to see a problem spot a little bit further west. But from the 29th of April through the 28th of May, the problem spot is here in terms of a percent of normal precipitation. On average, this area here, if you averaged it out, it's getting about 50% of the normal rain. So it's not that it's not raining. It is raining. The problem is, is that it wouldn't take much for it to become inadequately dry, to be a problem. 60-day departures, you can still see where the, where the main focal point is for concern. And that is where my concern ultimately lies for the growing season. That's the heart of the grain belt. That's the heart of corn, the heart of soybeans. For the, well, soybeans might be a little further east, but you get my point. It's dry. Any map you look at, it's just a little bit drier. All right, I wanted to show you the aridity index. Now, I know you all are saying, Michael, you are a total idiot. It's rain, it's raining, it's wet, I can't plant. For people, that is the case. It is, it's absolutely the case. This method right here, looking at the aridity index at this time of year, works. I'm telling you, this area right here, there are concerns that the summer will feature a lack of rainfall. If there is rainfall, perhaps we get a lot of it in June for the first 20 days, and the pattern transitions to a drier and warmer one. Um, if there is rainfall beyond that, it's perhaps coming in the form of severe weather and thunderstorm clusters. But this area, this aridity index map from the 28th of February through the 28th of May, um, is, is, is a, it's a concern. All right. It, so it's drier here. And, and again, it's, it, you're in good spots here. You're sitting, you're sitting nicely. Um, in the eastern and southeastern grain belt, I've always thought all along we're going to have a garden spot this year. And where it's going to have great, probably, growing conditions. And it's probably somewhere in here. It's probably somewhere in here. It hasn't been bad here either, though. Okay? So there's more crops in the eastern Dakotas than there are the western, but you get my point. I want to go over here to Clarity. Okay? And I want to show you uh, the soil moisture index uh, map that updates daily. It's, it's similar to the drought monitor, only a little bit more in the, in the real-time world top four to six inches of the soil moisture percentile using the NASA Sport List Index. Okay, and again, there's your concerns. I've seen drier, don't get me wrong, I've seen drier. Um, but point being, getting into summer, it wouldn't take much to exacerbate that. 
And that's going to kind of be my focal point for the video today. The first thing I want to do is I want to go over 24-hour rain threats here using the, uh, the uh, weather model, uh, overnight GFS. Okay, This is the day one, so from 2 a.m. this morning to 2 a.m. Friday. This is how much rain we're anticipating across portions of south-central Kansas and northern Oklahoma. Right? You can see that blob of rain right there. Right, And then as we go forward, take this out. Had to move that a little bit here. Let's take that out into day two. There's the day two rain. All right, That's going to go uh, Thursday night, tonight, into Friday morning. Okay. And you can see, uh, in fact, actually, this is uh, the uh, Thursday, yeah, Thursday 8 p.m. to Friday 8 p.m., my apologies. And you can see the rainfall here anticipated here across the Ohio River Valley, south and east here into Cincinnati, heavy rain, southern Indiana, Ohio into portions of Kentucky. Then we'll go in here to day three, some residual wraparound rain showers, some nasty weather hanging out in the uh, Ohio Valley, um, and rain in the northeast. Okay, going into day four. More rain for Kansas and Oklahoma. Some showers and overcast sky conditions possible there in western Illinois, Missouri. Some light rain being possible there. Getting into day five. All right, you can see a heavy rain event that, again possible there for portions of Oklahoma. Kind of a rinse and repeat pattern there in the day five time frame. Again, that's going to be um, Friday night. Uh, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one there. That's going to be uh, Sunday night through Monday night, okay? And then as we go forward, we're going to go in here to day six. Look at that there, eastern uh, Kansas, central Missouri. A little bit of a better rain system here by day six, day seven of next week. So a week from today, it's possible you're looking at a decent shot of rain here starting in the central U.S., working east, and it could come in the form of severe weather, all right? So... What does it look like for total QPF the next seven days? That's the latest right now. That's the latest GFS forecast model. Uh, a lack of rain, if you will, um, here. And questionable, if you ask me, questionable here. So again, next seven days, you know, what are we dealing with? Uh, how much rain actually falls? Uh, we'll go to the overnight European run in the same time frame. Look at this. Okay, again... A seven-day rainfall that that highlights that area a little bit east. It's got more rain in Iowa and Nebraska, no question. A little bit east, um, even out to the 15-day time frame, you can see the area of concern there. So it's possible here, yes, European GFS a little bit further back in here, but it's also dry in here. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? You can kind of see the the concerns, if you will, in the forecast. This is a look here at the um, European AI model data. And what I want to show you is, is kind of how active the pattern looks to become um, in the terms of, of severe weather for the central U.S. and possibly into the Ohio Valley. There's the front that goes through this weekend. This is by Saturday morning. Cold front comes in. It's going to be a nice weekend after this departs. Sunny and 70 in a lot of sections here of the Ohio Valley and uh, the central U.S. Next storm system right there. See that ridge digging in, or that uh, that trough digging in, central plains running into the ridge. That's that uh, day four, five, six severe weather threat. Okay, I haven't actually looked. There's potential that we have extended range severe weather risks from the Storm Prediction Center. I haven't looked at it. Wouldn't shock me next week to see multiple days of severe weather. And then beyond that, another system, 5th, 6th, and 7th, and 8th of June comes down, bringing these troughs in here. And that's where you're going to have the continual chances for rain uh, but exactly where and, and who ends up at or above the normal precip. Well, if you ask the European, there's the hit and miss nature of it in terms of the AI data for at or above normal or below normal precip. But go over here and check out the ensemble. This is the 15-day ensemble. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean in this particular situation in here that it's not raining. This doesn't mean you get no rain, Okay, uh, even up into the prairies, really. Uh, it means that rains are below the normal. The concern is, yes, it absolutely can rain, a lot of rain down here. Uh, it absolutely can and will rain, but it's not adding big rain numbers to already deficited drier areas. And when the pattern, if and when it does go dry, it can make it go dry pretty quickly. So the severe weather uh, prospects, week two, it's enhanced. Where the reds 
Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and a kind of classic tornado alley out there week two. Week three, the threat shifts east, all right? Enhanced severe weather risks for all the grain belt into the Ohio Valley as well as we get into June 11th through the 18th. So active weather patterns coming the next couple of weeks is the idea. We extended out to the week three and four time frame, latest CFS weekly. And again, here's the precipitation forecast from normal. CFS weekly, week three, week four. You see what's happening? Okay, you're cooler down to the south, you're wetter south. And you've got this ridge or this warmer air tries to set up shop here. If this pattern can amplify and persist, what these patterns typically do, guys, is I'm going to use this map to illustrate this exact this, this intensifies. What I mean by this is um, we'll go here. I'm going to go here. This can sprawl out, spread the warmth. And the dryness sprawls and spreads. And what happens is, is precip stays south and goes north and east, uh, and off to the east coast. And problems develop in the primary growing regions. This pattern is a precursor to the concerns that we have for a warmer and drier summer forecast. Once the pattern flips, if it does, if it can, when it does, when it can, it's probably around pollination or slightly before, after June 20th through the first week of July. So these precursors of expanded dryness and warmth suggest that that flow pattern is kind of cutting off. And stuff can come up underneath it and hang out, but it can get warm and dry to the north of it. So we got to watch that. That needs to be a concern going forward. We've updated the forecasts. I've got three and four week forecast panels on the left. Again, we've talked about this area. It's not going to not rain. You will get rain. All right. It may trend drier late June into July. We still have below normal factored in here for July and below normal here in August. We don't have much belows because their confidence is somewhat shaky. Um, I want to watch what happens in here. This potentially expands. This potentially expands. Same for August. It's above normal temps. The risk would be it just squashes the cooler down to the south, much like you see with August, but warmer temps and below, uh, further below normal precip. That's the idea. So the end all. Listen, we've had a set of yields analogs for a minute. The new ones, we've tossed in some new ones based on some wetter Junes. Recent, recent trends. If you factor them all together, um, you know, you still come out suggesting yield to be 1.8 below the trend. Okay, with two problem years being 11 and 12. Those are the problem years. Um, you've got years that are above trend. Okay, it's one of those years where, um, you know, I don't think it's I, I think there's just problems, and it's hard to nail it down still on May 29th. But I just think there that, that there winds up being more problems than there does just problem-free with the overall weather pattern as it pertains to the U.S. grains. So we're going to continue to monitor this. We're trying to nail down and figure out the summer pattern right now, um, and we're going to continue to do that. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you check us out over on BAMWX.com um, to get daily localized updates right to your location and more of the same of this. Take care.